because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Coop and Cassius for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. It's the morning after. We're in Wembley. I'm joined by still world champion, Sonny Edwards. How did you feel, mate, first of all? Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. Can't complain about much. Still got my world title, 20 and all. Sun shining. Yeah, life's good. Let's, um, first of all, let's talk about a unanimous decision scorecard. Uh, what did you think about the actual scores, though? Yeah, that's literally how we scored it in the, in, in the corner. The three rounds, we could probably pick them, and there was the three rounds that all three judges gave. When I stayed there and let him work and let him use up his gas tank, like there was no point of there was no point in the fight that you know he pinned me down. That, that, again, just like Alvarado, just like all these other fighters, you see me mixing in the corner and that I'm doing it on purpose. I'm counting the clear rounds that I'm outboxing them and clearly outscoring them, and then I'll give them a few rounds, you know, to mix up. I'll try and find my shots inside, um, give them a target, and then the next few rounds take that target away. Um, yeah, Grant was bang on in the corner, he told me the rounds that they gave against me. Um, we went and looked at the scorecards and they were the rounds that they gave against me, so like, we know what we're doing. A lot of people see them nine minutes of a 36 minute fight and start thinking, oh, well, it was close. But if I wanted to go 12 rounds on the back foot, I felt like I'd come out in the first 10 seconds and showed you if I wanted to make a miss with everything he threw, I could, genuinely. But then people give me stick for fucking just running away for 12 rounds, you know what I mean? So, And I, and I do actually like having a fight, like if you come and watch me spar, if you come down to the gym, like I don't box on my back foot. I'm there, I'm one step out. I'm like, I, like, I like having a fight, I like the mix up, I like taking a shot. No one probably would have been able to pick up for it. The best shot he caught me was something like the fifth or sixth round. I tell him good shot and I'm smiling and I sit in there and let him keep working. I, getting caught with a shot doesn't like, scare me, doesn't phase me. So, yeah, I enjoyed myself in there. I was practicing, working on a few things. I didn't get the shot that I kind of wanted to. I thought I hurt him a couple of times to the body. I thought as well when I was letting my hands go in flurries, there was times when I like buzzed him a little bit and there were some shots coming in, but it was quite good at re recovering, quite good at, um, and also being allowed to tie up for, for longer than I would have liked, to be honest. I don't, I feel like if I had a flag, you know, an international referee, you know, a referee that weren't British, I feel like, you know, the referee's performance would have been different, I'll be real. There was clear infringements of the rules, constantly, heads, <coughs> elbows, and every single time we was coming together, he was holding my lead hand as tight as he could. And even when the referee was saying break, I was getting stuck every single time. Like, I know it's boxing, as the referee told me, you know, in the sixth, seventh round, I'm like, come on. And he's going, it's boxing. I was like, I know you're meant to be the referee to make sure it is boxing. But yeah, I guess, because I had a, a British judge and a British ref, and then two neutrals, I guess, you know, we had to kind of double down and make it look like he weren't on my side, which I think he really did, to be honest. I don't know if I'd want that referee again, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, as predicted by yourself, it, it turned out to be a, a relatively comfortable night against Campos. How motivated are you for fights like Campos when there's Bam Rodriguez, there's Martinez hovering around your brain, all the talk has been of those two fights in particular. But how motivated are you going into a fight that was that comfortable for you? Yeah, I mean, from straight away, I knew even when he was landing shots, they weren't like the heaviest. But to be fair to me, I quite um, quick hands. He didn't have the worst shot selection either. He was going up and down, he was changing the target. He was trying, you know, use everything he could to close the gap and then sort of smother me, but as well find his range. Like, he weren't the worst at a lot of things, but with me, you see the best when there's some fear factor, when there's like a threat in front of me and you sort of see me hit that, that little bit of like zen, if you like, um, and really get out of the way of him. But with him, I was riding the shots, I was sitting in the pocket. I was, I was enjoying myself, to be honest. But like I said, who wants to see Sonny Edwards just jump in for 12 rounds and just ping someone's head off with just long shots from long range? Like For like at least seven or eight of the rounds, that's what you got, because that's how I make sure I win the fight, you know what I mean? But for part, like, there's rounds I'm having fun in there, and that. I know a lot of people won't maybe understand it or just put it down to no, that's not what you was doing. But yeah, if you think I'm a liar, you think I'm a liar. But nah, I like mixing it up. 
I like sitting in there. I like, you know, trying to find them body shots. I like doing like little steps and then trying to step out and throw off, uh, a couple of clean shots. And yeah, like, I enjoyed the fight. I enjoyed the fight. I enjoyed the performance. I think it was my best, and I think it was my best performance. But there's a reason why I'm always calling the biggest fighters and accepting the harder fights because I know it brings out a different side of me. It brings out a different side of me in camp. It brings out a different side of me in my eating. It brings a different side out of me of everything. Like a couple of fights, Maruti, Alvarado, three, four weeks, two weeks before. I'm going to bed thinking about the opponent, going to bed like I'm getting, you know, I wouldn't say anxiety, but I'm getting ready for the fight, anticipation, like preparation mentally. With Campos, I can't lie, it's just, it's hard for me to get up the same way. And when I was in the ring even, like, he, he, there was never really, okay, he caught me with a right hand, but I won't hurt her. Like, he didn't like buzz me, he didn't like, he just caught me with a clean shot, like, and I can take a shot, so. Yeah, like the fear factor, I said, like it, like it weren't really there, but he was a good fighter in his own right. Campos, I'm sure, will come again. He was coming to change his life, so I know what that does to a fighter as well, that you get that little bit of boost more, especially when I might have been kind of overlooking him or oversighting him. But obviously, I don't prepare as if I do. I still train very hard. I still spar very hard. I've got a very professional team in, in Grant Smith, Pierce Goodjohn, the Steel City Gym. Um, yeah, I'm in a great place. 20-0, and I said at 15-0 and when I signed my contract. <laughs> At the time, it was with Frank, but I, I said 15 and all. The next five fights will change my life, and they kind of have. Okay, so Matchroom debut ticked, still undefeated, ticked. Um, I think the notable thing was I've seen the post-fight um, Eddie Hearn promising that your next fight will be a unification fight uh, on live TV. So he has to deliver that now for you. Yeah, I mean, he, I know he's trying and I know he's putting the pressure on Bam and uh, the other champions, like, because he knows, like he said, that I've already agreed my side for all of these fights, all of these eventual fights and these possible fights that we talk about. I've already agreed them all. Um, our side's done from when I signed. Like, to be an easy fighter to work with, you know, I know that it's important. I, I've never been a diva when it comes to getting me in the ring, ever. And like I said before, and I'll say it again, these fights mean as much to me, more to me, than they could ever mean to the company, Matchroom, Eddie Hearn, Design, because they mean something for my legacy, for my lifetime body of work. It's an event for them, an event they want to put on, an event they want to showcase, showcase the best fighters, unify the belts, give the fans what they want, etc. But for me, it's a lifetime of work and passion and soul getting into it. I want to know how good I am. Genuinely, and I'll only do that by constantly challenging myself, constantly challenging myself with the biggest, best names out there. Bam Rodriguez is the one that they're saying right now, outside of me, is the other man in the division. So I want him. I, I like Martinez, I like that fight for me, but, you know, he's no way to be seen, so I kind of forgot even thinking about him. I'm not even going to mention him in like, post-fight interviews and, and in the ring, because there's no point. I've done that and, and didn't get no closer. So Bam, I do think he'll fight me. I think, obviously, he's coming off a broken jaw. Will he want to go straight broken jaw into unification? I don't know. He would have had to have time off. He would have to have time off um, sparring, training. Um, I heard he's massively overweight at the moment, and that's why he didn't want to come over. So um, maybe that was the reason why it's not, not been agreed yet. Um, but like I said to Eddie, I'll fight anywhere in the world. And if I go to his hometown, the only thing I ask for is courtside seats to a basketball game. That's all I need, and I'm right I'm there. Um, well, you were straight down the lens with your message to Bam Rodriguez yesterday, so that is the target now. You've obviously, the Martinez fight, I can understand what you're saying, that the focus should be on Bam Rodriguez. That seems to be uh, the more likely fight to happen out of the two right now. So, yeah, it's clear what your path is now. Yeah, well, but I'll be real. Like, I'm done waiting on these fighters. Um, in a minute, if I don't get unification over the line, a mandatory is going to get called for Felix Alvarado again. And really, don't bring me nothing but a, a very hard fight. I think I put him up there with the Martinez's and the Bam Rodriguez's. I think the reason why none of them will fight him or have fought him or will go near fighting him, as well as the other champions around, um, is because they know he's a very, very, very dangerous fight. Um, so what's the point of just, what, fifth defence and then, what, get another voluntary no one cares about and then probably Felix Alvarado again as another mandatory because he'll keep pushing the IBF because, you know what I mean, what else has he got? No one else will fight him except me. Um, so yeah, I've spoke to them and if we can't get unification over the line in the next coming days, then it's different weight world champion. They mentioned Roman Gonzalez, that's sound. I would love a chance to get in the ring with a future first round Hall of Famer. 
someone I've spent my you know lifetime of looking at professional boxing, looking up to and and admiring. Um, 100% all of them fights, so I could even go up. I can even make light flyweight, definitely. Um, I checked my weight on the morning of the weigh-in. I went to Box Park, the scales were there um, an hour before the weigh-in just to make sure I was right place. I was a kilo under Coogan. I was 49.9, okay, 0.9 under. I was 49.9, I haven't been under 50 kilos in a long time, but I do it properly now. I've got a great nutritionist in Lee Ricards. I listen to what he says, make weight. Anyone that's been around fight week knows I've been training, I've been on no saunas, I've been doing no runs, sweatsuits, training sessions in the gym, pads, nothing. I've been chilling, chilling till fight night, chilling till the weigh-in and eating every single day. So I've got options, I've got the platform, I've got the promoter, I've got the profile and they've got the stable of fighters. And if the flyweights are still moving like uh, divas because I'm in a the division, then hopefully either the light fly or the super fly Whichever way it goes, whichever way they can make sense. I just want another belt. I'm sick, sick and tired of having one belt. Nah, because really, like, I've had five world title fights now and I've got one belt for it. A lot of people had five world title fights. Might have can, five. Do you know what I mean? I can, name, I can name British fighters that did just because the other champions would fight them. Like, and at the end of the day, the fighters I fought, okay, maybe not Campos, maybe not Mama, but Wazim was a good fighter. Um, he'd been there, had a hard fight with Maruti. Obviously, Mavriti, a great fighter. Probably should have come with more belts for that fight. And Alvarado was a champion, you know, a couple of months before and didn't lose his title in the ring. Just moved up weight to fight me. So that could have been another belt. Say if I went down to him, I could have at least had my two weight. So I want that. I want to start adding to it. Um, someone told me that I'm in quite an exclusive club because not that many British fighters have defended the world title four times. Um, I won't. I was trying to listen, but there was a lot of people speaking to me last night. So I don't know about that. But yeah, like I'm not even. I feel like I've done it all within myself. Genuinely, I feel like I've got so much more to give. I think I'm just really at the beginning, to be honest. Okay, well, listen, job uh, done for you. Like you're on holiday, mate, yeah. to be fair. Yeah, yeah I've got a couple, a couple of holidays planned. Um, well, one planned and maybe a couple more to, to fit in before I get back to it. But yeah, I want to stay on it, man. I enjoy boxing, so I'll be real. I'll probably have a conversation within the next seven days, like when am I fighting again? Yeah. Guarantee, like. I, I know what I'm like. Probably won't get to Tuesday. Monday, I usually think, oh, I can't do it on Monday. Tuesday, I'm coming. You know what I mean? I'll be back. You'd be around her and HQ, wouldn't you? Yeah, we'll go for a meeting. We'll go sit in the sun. You know what I mean? Who would have thought, you know? Cheers, Eddie. Who would have thought it? Um, see, trolling sometimes works, doesn't it, Sammy? you got to tease the girl to get the girl sometimes, Coogan. I'm telling you. You've got to. Interesting way of putting it. Okay, Sonny Edwards, appreciate your time. This Sunday, what is it, brunch now? Actually, it's gone past 11, yeah. between 11 and 12. Yeah. yeah, well, go and take a little bit of time off and then, yeah, start making them fights happen because you seem to have done all right so far. So. Yeah, like it. All I've ever done is box, so obviously I'm, I'm, I'm living out my reality. It's something I could only dream of as a kid. Generally, I'm in such a happy place i enjoy every part of this like my life has gone so good like, more than i could have even planned it to i mean boxing is all i've ever needed to do and now i'm in a place where you know i'm headlining wembley arena live on the zone you know big car big platform defending my world title for the fourth time and with massive nights laid out ahead of me I'd, all i've got to do is keep winning and i'm sure eddie will keep delivering um you know we'll be in the gym me grant the rest of the boys still City Gym. We're flying. I'm looking forward to the 1st of July um, card in Sheffield Arena. You know, we've got three lads on from the gym. You'll see me in the corners there. Um, yeah, like flying, like boxing is all I do. Boxing is all I've known, boxing is all I've ever known. And to have my son there for the first time and see me defend my world title and see me walk out in front of all them people and then jump in the ring after, like, it's memories that will last a lifetime for me, so. Yeah, I just want to thank everyone that, that watches, supports, whether they're liking or not liking. It's all the same, really. Um, I know I divide opinion. I know a lot of people think, you know, they, they, they write me off a certain way. They either like me or don't because of what I know they see on the internet or something I say in the, uh, an interview or something I do on Fight Week. Like, but I get that's the only lens that they, uh, that's the only lens they ever get to see. So, like I said, I appreciate all the support the positive and the negative. I'm, I'm looking forward to being part of big fights. You know, Edwards versus Campos was really just me bringing all the profile in the ring, I guess. Um, but I'll be real, I feel like the um, the Chilean support, they, they they played their part, man. I feel like we had fun with 
fun with the build up a little bit. It was a bit tense. It was a bit aggy for a few days. Like there was a bit of tension in the air, but it was nice looking at my Instagram and seeing it flooded with like negative comments and like 200 likes under each run because they're just hundreds and hundreds of Chileans like supporting their man and like. That's what I like being a part of. I like being a part of something that splits and divides. And then the first comments I'm seeing, there's like a handful of people going back and replying to all the comments underneath my comments saying, oh, where's your man now? And even though there was massive respect for my opponent after, just like there always is, you earn it in the ring. Like a lot of people think it's fake. It's not, you know what I mean? A lot of this thing is like, when tensions are high and you know what I mean? There's, there's you're getting into the ring in a, in a matter of days and there's the weighing going and then you're aggy and then something happens that you don't like, you're proud, you're, you're reactive, but once you've gone 12 rounds, you shake hands and, and you're both men and it's earned, and that, that respect is earned in the ring like nowhere else. It's the most honest conversation two men can ever have. I thought Campus was a worthy challenger. Just because I speak and, and you know, I'm playing my game sometimes. I'm playing my game sometimes. I'm telling him, no, you're not, you don't deserve to be in the ring with me. I'm, like, I'm putting pressure on myself as well. I'm telling everyone that he don't deserve to be in the ring with me because that's where the pressure for me had to come. I had to put like, normally there's pressure from you know, their knockout ratio or, or what they've done in their career, or there's like some sort of pressure, but I didn't really feel that from Campos. So that was my version of putting pressure on myself. If I'm not falling out of someone before it, I'm putting pressure on myself that way. And yeah, I, I enjoyed every part of it. I thought the build up was great. The fight week was great. The media was great. The exposure was great. And I'm just really looking forward to what's next. Okay, Sonny, uh, thank you very much for your time again and uh, we'll definitely catch up with you probably around that time of the Sheffield card on July the 1st. Um, yeah, congratulations. Another win and uh, you move on. Yeah, um, that's it. Just keep the ball rolling um, and imminently, hopefully, find out that unification's agreed. I've seen the, the tweet and the comments from Bam saying, let's go, pen down sign. Well, if he doesn't sign, he's going to look real stupid now, do you know what I mean? Real stupid, like you can't, you can't do that. But they did say before when they moved to flyweight that they was coming to fight me in the UK for my IBF flyweight title. Instead, they opted to fight in his hometown, or whatever it was, for a WBO vacant title against someone no one had ever heard of. So, I don't know, I won't hold my breath. I really won't hold my breath. I think there's always going to be another stipulation, another stipulation. They're going to want to rematch clause, but not give me one. Or, do, you know, do you know what I mean? There's going to be something. Like, there's going to be something. Just know that I've agreed my side so if you're sat there wanting me to fight these people because you want to see me succeed and progress then then on my side you can rest assured that you've got your wish from me if you're sat there wanting to see these big fights with me and them because you want to see me get beat you want to see me get knocked out you can also rest assured that they're not not happening double negative but they're not not happening because of me genuinely just as eddie would say and eddie won't sit there and lie um uh you won't sit there and lie when I'm sat right next to him. We have agreed all of these fights you could ask me about. What happens if I win? What happens if I lose? What happens after that? Again, we've, we've done the tree of how my career can go. So like, we'd agreed when I signed my contract, all of these fights, because that's the best way for me to do business. I don't want to, oh, Campos, OK, well, I did that. Well, all oh, that fight's worth a little bit more already. Come on. Like, no, I just want the fights. I've been waiting for them. I've been starved of them a real proper dancing partner. And I think Bam Rodriguez is the biggest dancing partner in the division. So that's ideally who I'd want. Sonny, thank you very much. And uh, we'll catch you again soon, mate. Nah, thank you, Kugel. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shut up, Barry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 